Hello and welcome to this research presentation video where I will describe the article we are publishing today in PLOS One. So the article we are publishing is called Doing Well-Being. Everyday activities are related to subjective well-being. And we are focusing here on everyday activities and subjective well-being, and we use natural language processing techniques to analyze our data. So what are we exploring in this article? We're exploring the relationship between self-reported everyday activities and subjective well-being. We're exploring whether individuals can describe how their everyday activities relate to their subjective well-being. And I will explore and elaborate this question a little bit more in detail a bit later. And also we're exploring which everyday activities individuals relate to subjective well-being. And we asked in two studies around 300 participants for each study from the UK via Prolific. And if we start with the final point, the last and third point, which everyday activities individuals relate to subjective well-being, we asked individuals, what activities do you regularly do that increase your overall well-being? And what activities do you regularly do that decrease your overall well-being? And we do a plot based on natural language processing that is like this. On the right-hand side, the green words, we have words, that are related, significantly related to the descriptions of activities increasing well-being. And on the left-hand side, the red words, we have words that are significantly related to activities decreasing well-being. And the black and gray words, they are common words, frequent words that are not significantly related to either the descriptions of increasing, of activities increasing well-being nor decreasing well-being. So the green words, they are quite intuitive, right? The increasing well-being words. You have a lot of physical active activities like exercise, walking and swimming. You have a lot of social activities like socializing and friends. And you have a lot of cognitively active activities like mindfulness and meditation. But the left-hand side, the red words, they are less intuitive, right? We have a lot of function words like too much, enough, unhealthy, and so on. Then we have to remember that we are using state-of-the-art natural language processing that is able to analyze sentences and not only single words. But this plot depicts single words. So what we need to do here to get the understanding is that we need to combine the red words with the black and gray words. And then it makes much more sense. You get too much eating, too much work, work late, eating junk, and so on. Those types of activities or those types of imbalances in activities they are detrimental for your well-being. So what we were looking for, what we were trying to explore if, was if whether individuals could describe the link between their activities, their everyday activities and their well-being. So we asked them to write activities that reflect their overall well-being, their regular activities they do that reflect their overall well-being. And we thought that they could do that since activities have been related to uh, well-being previously. But then there is another question. Why should you and me have the same understanding of what an, a well, uh, what an activity is that is good for our well-being or bad for our well-being? Maybe I think that uh, going to the sauna is a, an activity that is good for my well-being, whereas for you, that's very bad for your well-being. And you maybe like to 
ride horses or something like that. So we tested how well individuals agree on what an activity is that increase and decrease well-being is by using the words that I showed in the plot. And we wanted to classify them to either an activity increasing or decreasing well-being. And our model could classify these responses with a very high accuracy with an area under the rock curve at 0.99, which is almost as high as you get. So the conclusion of that analysis was that individuals agree on what activities that increase and decrease their well being. So, how well could they map their activities to their well being? How well could they describe their activities that reflect their well being? Pretty okay. The correlation of those activities to well being was around 0.25 which is quite okay in social science. But when they describe their well-being with any words, the correlation is 0.6, which is much higher, of course. And there's a big discrepancy here, and we call this discrepancy the well-being activity description gap. And in the article, we are elaborating and discussing potential explanations for this gap. Maybe individuals don't understand how their activities, their everyday activities relate and reflect their well-being. Maybe activities are not that related to well-being as previously expected. So we have different kinds of explanations for this but we don't know for sure what that is. And that is something that future research will have to dig into more. What is the cause of this well-being activity description gap? So what do I want to leave you with? Yes, social active and cognitively active activities are good for well-being. Imbalance in activities is bad for well-being. Individuals agree on which activities that increase and decrease their well being. And they are okay, but not particularly good at describing the relationship between their activities and well being. And please find the article and other relevant links that I've talked about in the description below. So thank you. Hope you will read the article.